Hey, Toby, I heard we're going to the Ozark Mountains this week. Do you know what we're going to be doing? We're going to be learning about some of the unusual animals that live there and the people that train them. Really? I thought I heard something about a nature trail. You mean the Ozark Mountain Nature Trail? Yeah, are we going hiking? Actually, we're going to learn how a community can plan, design, and build a trail for their outdoor enthusiasts. So don't go away. We'll be back in a few minutes. Young America Outdoors! We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. Young America Outdoors! Now we return to Young America Outdoors. Parrots are highly intelligent animals, and they're capable of being quite tame and very affectionate. They're even able to speak and do all kinds of tricks. You can see them in shows all over the world, doing everything from riding bikes and balancing objects to counting. But I bet you've never seen a parrot do magic tricks. If you want to see how it works, maybe we can get the hamburgers to tell us some of our secrets on how they train these birds. Well, Toby, there's no real secret to it. We treat the animals just like we treat other people. We love them with a lot of tender, loving care. We train them at a young age. They learn uh, the effects they're going to do, which I really can't tell a whole lot of <laughs> secrets because it is oh, magical. <laughs> Millie is a Moluccan cockatoo. She's one of our stars of the show, and we uh, produce her magically, and she has learned this from a young bird. We uh, do a card production with a, a big card fan, and she flies out of the card fan. And she's learned how to do this. We've trained her since a, since a small little uh, hatchling. The Moluccans are distinguished by this beautiful salmon crest. Can you see that there? Oh, it's gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? And they got all kinds of neat colors here. We got white and yellow, and then of course the pinky hue that she has all over her, her feathering. The Moluccans are on the endangered species list, which is a kind of a serious thing. That means that the, the wild populations are diminishing in the wild because of the shrinking of the uh, rainforest and everything. Also, they're, they're hunted in the wilds quite a bit. And, Sometimes they're really? even eaten in the wild, which is very sad because they're so beautiful creatures. George is a macaw, and he is, he's really beautiful. <laughs> he looks like he might be kind of a rare bird, is, is that right? Yes, he's rare. He's a blue and gold macaw, and actually all of the exotic birds are kind of threatened today because of the deforestation, the diminishing rainforest over in Central and South America. And that's where these birds originally came from. That's why we in America... Uh, with the uh, associations of birds believe in a, in a very aggressive breeding program here in America so these birds will not be lost in the future. Well, what, what is his role in the act? Actually, George uh, is a bird that's produced out of nowhere. And I can't tell you how this happens, but he's produced out of nowhere and he also flies also. So what comes first? Do you find a bird that you know kind of what it can do and then develop the act, or do you develop the act and then try to find the bird? Well, I guess normally as most illusionists or magicians, we think up an illusion effect, a trick. Mm -hmm. And then we try to find the bird that will most correctly fit into that effect, uh, temperament-wise, uh, 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 the, their personality on stage, and we try to work them in with that special effect, that illusion. So guys, how do the birds work into your show? Well, we have... Uh, Ten exotic birds that we produce in about nine minutes, and some people have called it impact magic, where we produce one gigantic bird right after another. They fly out over the audience and come back. Denise has helped me with a lot of these illusions. She helped me with the newspaper trick. It's kind of a unique trick. What's the newspaper trick? Well, we take this newspaper and tear it all up, and it turns into a puppet, a newspaper puppet. The audience laughs. It's very comedic. And then from the newspaper and the puppet comes a live exotic bird and it's it's very interesting very comical effect we have another one that's kind of a signature piece we produce these giant sets of coins kind of like a fan of coins and two cockatoos come up on top and that's very strong and of course our signature piece is at the end when we produce four macaws and let them loose in the auditorium they fly out over the audience uh, the audience loves it. They scream, and then they lock them up at the end. The wings lock up, and they glide down over the audience and come back to us. Oh, and wow. we hit that pose with four macaws. A lot of my magician friends have said it's the, the most unique bird act around. So we're excited about being able to put this together. It's taken about eight and a half, nine years, but we feel it's well worth it. Now, which kind of bird is this? This is an umbrella cockatoo, and they come from Indonesia. Is it difficult for Berthy when you bring her into the theater environment? Well, when we did show up to the Remington Theater and we found out it's called Branson City Lights All-Star Review, she uh, had a lot of adjusting to do with the, the juggling and the ice skating and just the big variety show that it is. 
there was a lot going on. So I think all of them had to adjust in the beginning, but once they got caught on to that, it just really worked out. How did you decide birds over any other kind of animal? When we would do, well, let's backstep. When we would do the illusions, we'd get a real nice reaction from the audience, but when I would produce a bird, a live animal, they would really react to it. We also have worked with tigers and elephants, but I feel that we get a better reaction from our parrots than we did when we worked with the tigers and the elephants. And so I said, we've got to go into the big bird thing, and that's what we did. Can you say hello, Bertha? I don't know if she will. Trying to get Bertha to say hello. I don't know if she will. Hello? A lot of the people that I talk to use a, a reward-based method, but you said you guys use trust. Yes. So how does that, how does that work differently? Well, um, we just love them, and we keep food around them 24 hours a day. We don't reward them with food. When they fly back, they're coming back to us in our theater, not from light control, not from they're being hungry, I want to get fed by mom and dad. They're coming back because they love us, and I want to come home. Now, guys, I promised everyone that you would reveal some of your secrets, and so far I've got nothing. So is there anything you could tell me? Well, we could give some of our secrets away, but then we'd have to make our whole audience disappear forever, and that wouldn't be very nice. But what we can say, there <laughs> is a secret to training birds and animals. It's perseverance, patience, and a lot of love. I tried to get some of their secrets out of them, but Alex, they just would not budge. Well, that's all right, Toby. We still have a little time to figure out how they did it. So stay with us. Young America Outdoors. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors.